Apache Storm Rider. The mystique surrounds the shadow of the unrevealed horseman. Apache Tears was created as a tribute to the North American indigenous people. A collage of symbolic images framed the centerpiece, which was that of an Apache chief of 1889. Big Knife. This healer resided in the Calgary area of Alberta, Canada. Big Knife was a leading ceremonialist of the Sarsi band in the early 1900s. Black Belly, an old Cheyenne woman who was originally photographed by Edward Curtis in 1905, as she is depicted here. Storylines in her face reveal an incredible life of history. Unidentified Blood Warrior. As he looked in 1885, dressed in full traditional regalia of the blood people who roamed the land with the buffalo along the Alberta Plains. Chief Dan George, a Canadian legend from the Burrard Squamish Nation of North Vancouver, BC, Canada. He's a longshoreman, spokesman, author, and actor. It's not the colors you wear, but how you wear them. Chief Joseph, one of the most revered of all leaders chief and warrior of the Nez Pierce. He is depicted here how he looked as a young man. I will fight no more forever. Chief's daughter, ready to ride. Marine Big Plume, as she looked in the early 1900s, she was the daughter of a stony chief in a place called Indian Village in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Dance champion, the Six Nations Iroquois lacrosse player and dance champion resides in Eastern Canada. Born into the Bear Clan, he is dressed here in full traditional dance regalia. Dance for our ancestors. Prophesized that it would take seven generations to heal. These dancers are of this seventh generation. The silhouette of the horsemen represents the presence of their ancestors. Gathering of Nations. This is one of my favorites. Painted faces of North America's bands frame this traditional buffalo skull. The buffalo skull is used in circle camp ceremonies and sweat lodge rituals. Geronimo. Medicine man, warrior, and leader of the Apaches. They say that he could not be caught, that he would literally dodge bullets. Depicted here in 1905 at the age of 76. Grizzly. The bear totem is a powerful symbol for the indigenous people. It represents courage, strength, and self-reliance. It is believed that the grizzly bear was put here to protect the earth. Inuit Elder. This image of a happy soul is an interpretation of an Inuit woman who resides in the Canadian Arctic. The elders of indigenous people are revered for their life skills, insight, and wisdom. Iroquois spirit, the name of this Six Nations Iroquois is Flint Eagle. He is depicted here playing the traditional instrument of his people in the background the spirit of the horse representing freedom. Mohawk Girl, the Six Nations dancer is of the Turtle Clan. Her name means paddling down the river. The Mohawk bands reside in eastern Canada. Old Buffalo Hunter, the storylines on this portrait depict the weathered life and times of an old buffalo hunter. His name was Lane Bull. Interpreted here as he looked in the early 1900s, Lane Bull was of the Blackfoot Band, who roamed the plains of Alberta, Canada. Path of Choice. Gaul was a Sioux warrior and leader. He is the centerpiece for this depiction of his First Nations legend, The Wolves Within. It tells how one evening a Cherokee elder sat with his grandson to tell him about the battle that goes on within people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. This wolf speaks with anger, envy, jealousy, hatred, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. This wolf speaks with joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness and caring, empathy, respect for self and others, generosity, truth, and faith. The grandson listened to his grandfather's words and asked, Which wolf wins? The wise Cherokee elder looked into his grandson's eyes and replied, The one you feed. Plains Dancer. This proud depiction of a dancer in full traditional regalia is seen here as he looked in the early 1900s. 
views of the blood people who reside along the Alberta plains of Canada. He had three names, Spider, Big Crow, or Long Hair. Shoshone Warrior, Rabbitel was his name, and he is depicted here as he looked in the late 1800s. He was known to be a very proud but vain warrior. He liked to look at himself and was rarely seen without his brass studded mirror war club. Sitting Bull, Yotanka Yotanka of the Teton Sioux, a medicine man, warrior, and chief. I will fight and die fighting before any white man can make me an agency Indian. Ghosts of the Heights, these endangered snow leopards dwell along the mountain ranges of Asia. I was commissioned to illustrate this original for an individual who works with an organization that strives for the preservation of these wildcats. Soulmates, these cougars are a natural part of the west coast landscape and inhabit the wooded and hilly terrain of Vancouver Island. Stony Chief. This Stony Chief was a prominent leader of the Stony Men in the early 1900s along the Kootenai Plains of Canada. In the 1940s, he rejected the reservation and moved to the Kootenai foothills. Some of his people followed him, and the government later gave him his own land there. War drums of our past, part of our history and heritage. Yutanka Yutanka, sitting bull, medicine man, leader, warrior, and chief. He was the incarnation of the fighting spirit of the Teton Sioux Nation, a man of blood and iron. In a different environment, he would have become a leader of great nations. He was illustrated side by side with General George Armstrong Custer of the 7th Cavalry. Custer was the youngest man in the U.S. Army to ever be promoted to his rank at the age of 23. His arrogance cut his career short, and his fate was sealed in the Little Bighorn River by the underestimated force of the Sioux Warriors. These wild ponies are for your interpretation. I'd also like to acknowledge the creative team of one, our site manager and videographer, Arthur Souls. <laughs>